Yeah, g'day guys. This is my 1957 Dual 16 inch bandsaw and it's been driving me nuts because the gearbox keeps jumping out of gear. So I need to fix it. It's a lovely machine. I identified three problems with that. Now I've nearly finished fixing all the components. It's just one more machining job I need to do and then I can start putting it all back together and test it. So in the last couple of videos I cast up a new shifter fork, machined it, made a new shaft for it. Also made a detent block to try and improve the guiding of the shifter mechanism. And this week the next major thing I need to fix are these kind of hook features here. The drive dogs. I think I showed on earlier videos but this particular pair is the low speed drive dog pair and as you can see the angle's wrong, they're kind of round shouldered and there's no relief groove down at the bottom of these so I need to fix that. I only have to do this one side, the high speed gears. The low speed dogs are already in very good condition. Now if you look at this old video, which I think I'm going to put up here in the right, you can see how badly worn the shoulders of these dogs were when I first pulled the gearbox apart. So I got in and ground these, but I really didn't think it through and do a good job when I did it. The grind was done with a cutoff wheel in the tool and cutter grinder that didn't have a nice flat dressed face, so it left a bit of a curvature, and I didn't gash in a relief groove before I started. So to do it this time, I've bought a decent grinding wheel, which I can dress before I start. First thing I'll do is just gash these relief grooves by hand, so then I can get nice clean and flat faces on them. Right, well that's the corners relieved. They might even work as it is, but now the faces are still totally misaligned. So next up, let's grind those faces. Before I can mount these, I'm going to need some centering spigots. So I've got a couple of bits of aluminium here. Let's go to the lathe. Right, looking at this piece, I got a feeling that I can get both of the others that I need out of it. So if I turn this feature first, then I can flip it, put it in a collet, and do all the rest in one setup. Oh nice, just nips up at the end. Oh, 
that was stalling out, so let's put it on a back gear. Now we'll have to speed up with the variator. Right, now I need to set up my rotary table. Well, I'm now at the point of this program where I have to decide how many degrees of back rake I want to grind into these dogs. And I'm pretty limited by the whole geometry of the Klaxon tool and cutter grinder. I got a bunch of different recommendations in the comments section of how many degrees I should use. Anything from zero degrees through to, you know, well beyond five. So what's this space going to work out like? It looks like this is going to work quite nicely for me, so I think I'll take that. So with the angle set, now let's put the spigot in. This has got a really nice sort of fit in there. Let's give that a little bump. Now to grind this perfectly, I've made a little mark to show where the center is. So I can try and set my grinding wheel perfectly on that center. I'll zero out the rotary table before I start. And to get everything aligned, this is going to pop on here. So I need to put super glue on it and turn it into contact with the grinding wheel and that will then set everything up to a nice zero position. From there, I can just dial and feed with rotation. I'll give all this a good degreasing before I glue it. Right, here goes nothing. Right, just let that set. You know, I really do love this Klaxon tool and cutter grinder as well. It's a very handy tool. Well, it looks like there's a nice little back rake right the way down to the root, so that's good. Okay, all three of them are looking nice and pretty even. Let's take a closer look, shall we? I do have a little bit of an angle on the top of one, but I think that's just the slop in the cross slide of this Klaxing tool grinder. But all in all, they're looking really nice and even. Let's switch to the others. Right, I'm going to need a little heat to break that glue. I don't want to ruin the temper on this, so I think I'll try plan B and soak it overnight in acetone. Just clean this up a bit and I'll put a little pip in the middle of it because with the angled rotary table when I move the height of this I also lose my centering. I also noticed that my soft jaws are sticking out a bit too far so I've set a cut to go almost to touch the chuck jaws but stop beforehand so this way I can clean up the soft jaws and the part at the same time. You can hear that I reached the limit of the variable frequency drive speed control at about uh, this point. 
So I hit the next speed up on the variator just before I got to that middle button. Right, I need to pick up that center again. Right, there's the height adjusted. So once again, once you've got it dialed in, the actual grinding doesn't really take long. And because they were ground on the same setting, they should have the same angle. Yeah, I'd say that's looking pretty good. Yep, that looks like it's going to engage nicely. And the third one also right now before i can start reassembly i just need to polish up these portions of the shifter a little and maybe do a little filing to get the whole thing to run smoothly yeah that's now working really nicely i did find one little burr inside the slot so i just dressed that off with a stone and now it's running really nice and smoothly I may still have to file back this curve a little bit. I'm not sure if I've got the spacing of those two holes perfect, but I guess we'll soon see once I start assembling. Right, reassembly starts with putting this uh, dog selector back on the, must be the output shaft. It's easy to forget that this has got an Allen key under it, an Allen screw pressing on one of the uh, keys. I think I forgot that. Removing it, I pulled it off with a puller, which is not ideal. Right, now that's in, I can check out the fit of my new shifter arm. Okay, that's already starting to bind up even there. So what I can see is that this needs to go into the fork further. There's much less gap here than here, so it's been pushed out too far. But I kind of expected that. That's easy enough to fix. Just need to file away a bit around this area. All right, that's looking good. Okay, I think that's looking good. It seems to hold the selector dog really nicely in position. No binding, and also moves nice and smoothly. It's very important that this nut doesn't come unscrewed. I think I'll put some green Loctite on that, give it a good clean down, to make sure that it's secure. I was even considering maybe staking the threads or maybe putting a nylock nut as well. Well, I couldn't find a nylock nut, but I do have some green high strength Loctite. I think I'll Loctite both the fork onto the shaft. and the nut onto the, onto the thread. Right, I need to press that bearing onto the shaft. And before that goes on, we've got, oh, let's get a bit of oil. Okay. The paws are gonna go facing the dog. Next is the spacer. And then the bearing. 
If I remember rightly, I made this pretty tight. So I'll have to press it on. It's all nicely back together. Just oil that plain bearing and the surfaces through there. How'd I get those to mesh last time? Oh wait, what have I just seen here? That's no good. There's no clearance here at all. That's going to need a different solution. Maybe if I take away the washer and shorten the excessive threads and maybe thin this down a little bit, it should actually work. But like that, it's not. Glad I picked that up before I put it together any further. Right, I've got it spaced up with washers to roughly the same width as my shifter fork. And I'll just quickly zip off most of it with a hacksaw. Now the lathe can clean up the rest. Okay, I don't think I was quite on center height because I've just chipped my insert. Okay, I'll just use a WCMT insert just to clean it up. How does that now look? So even with the shifter over engaging the low speed gear, I've got about two millimeters of clearance. So that's good. I'll glue and stake it in that position. Right, that's not coming off. Right, I'll just clean down the ceiling surfaces. Oh man, why did I read the instructions after finish putting it together? I was supposed to put jointing compound on both sides and let it dry a bit. I'll, I'll whip it back open and redo it. Well lucky I took another look at that because that probably would have leaked here, that's at the bottom. Right, let's try that again. Okay, next step, I need to set up my little detent block and I need to find out where to put the divots in the shaft for the detent to work. This is the, like the cam following block. Just put that on loosely. And the actuating cam. Now in this position, that's the low speed gearing. That's the high speed. Getting a wee bit of binding in there, I don't know why. Click and away it goes. So this lever rotates through 180 degrees. Still need to wiggle the output shaft a little to get it to go through. Doesn't seem to actually matter which way I wiggle it. So whether I go up and over to change gear or down and around, it's the same thing. So I guess for the detent, I just have to locate this at this position, put a little center punch through here and mark them.
Okay, that's a pretty nice feeling detent there now. Pack it in there for a little more tension even. That detent should hold. I guess we'll see once it's running. Well, with that now seemingly working, I can disassemble it all again, put the cover plates on, fill the gearbox and install it. I bought some standard 40 weight oil, that's what the manual calls for. Right, let's get this thing back into the machine. Now this goes in. I need a bit of persuasion, it's not perfectly aligned. There's that steel bracket in there which is not exactly a perfect alignment thing. Let's try this out, this is slow speed. Still have to wiggle the gearbox a bit for changing gear, but here's high speed. Right, first off, I'll just throw on a kind of pretty worn out old blade. Blade guard. Right, how does that tracking look? Well, the top wheel's running nice and well centered. Let's look at the bottom. Yeah, that's kind of too far forward on the wheel. There's no tilt adjustment at the bottom. I'd have to adjust that probably by shimming the whole gearbox to get a slightly different angle. But hey, it's on there at the moment, so let's do a test cut. Okay, first up, nice and easy, just a bit of wood. Okay, now let's do a slow speed pass. Well, that's a good sign. That's the longest it's stayed in gear so far. Okay, next up. 
Let's try a bit of six millimeter mild steel plate. Okay, that blade's got no teeth left. Switch blades. Okay, while well, I got it open, I might as well grease those blade guides. Okay, once again with the six mil plate. Speed it up a little. Okay, sounds like the belt fell off. So it looks like I've still got some blade tracking issues to deal with, but at least that gearbox is not jumping out at the moment. I hope it's fixed, time will tell, but that's a positive sign so far. It's one job off here, but I do need to add... What's wrong with my blade tracking? Oh, that's brilliant. That's going to be quite a game changer for me, I think. I need to just look up how to do the tracking on this machine. Over the back here is the tracking adjustment on the top wheel, but there's no tracking adjustment on the bottom wheel. So I guess I'll have to do a bit of research to work out how to adjust the bottom to the top wheel. But at least that gearbox seems to be doing what it's designed to do. And that's brilliant because it was pretty much unusable before. Look forward to getting plenty more use out of it now. Now, once a month, roughly, I do a live stream for my Patreons and members. So if you'd like to join me on my next uh, live stream, It'll be on Sunday, and that's at 1 o'clock Central European time. Love it if you join me there. Thanks.